How the hell do I trade in seven days to die? Where do they all live? What do they sell? Who the fuck is that guy? What is this weird box thing? And how do I become Mr. Krabs and make me a millionth dollar? I'll be answering all those questions in today's video. Before we begin, I'd like to quickly thank you guys for getting the channel to 100 subscribers. It means a lot and it helps a ton. But with all that out of the way, let's get straight into my guide for bartering in Alpha 19. Let's go over the basic mechanics of the trading system in 7 days to die. When you find a trader and want to trade with them, select the May I see your inventory option. You'll be presented with an interface like this. On the right you can see your inventory. If you select something you can see the selling price on the top right. By the way the currency in 7 days to die is these Dukes Casino coins. On the left you'll see the trader's inventory. You can filter it by object type by selecting the tabs at the top. The tabs available will vary depending on what the trader has in stock. You can see the price and the quality of an item in the list below. From here you can click on something to buy it if you have enough Dukes. One thing to note about the trader's inventory is the secret stash tab. The secret stash tab is independent from the general inventory and you won't see any of the items in the secret stash with the all filter. In here you'll usually find the best and most expensive items. The items that spawn in the secret stash are dependent on your level of the better barter perk. More on that later. Finally on the top right you'll see the restock interval. The standard restock interval is 3 in game days. Every 3 days the inventory of the trader is completely remade with new items. By the way the traders in 7 days to die have infinite money and will buy infinite amounts of items but, this is important, they will only buy 3 stacks of a given item. This resets every trade cycle. Regardless of how big the full stack is, for example each trade cycle you can sell a trader 450 7.62 ammo. But you can only sell them 3 flashlights because 7.62 ammo stacks to 150 but flashlights do not stack at all. Some other important info to keep in mind about the traders is that they open at 6.05am. And close at 21.50pm. If you're inside or try to approach outside of this window, you will be teleported outside the trader area. You cannot damage the trader's house or them, traders cannot be killed at all, but they also don't care if you shoot them. By the way, as a tip for really new players, you can find broken or malfunctioning workbenches in every trader. Loot them for some nice schematics or loot early on. If the workbench happens to be functional, feel free to use it, just remember that you can't access it if it's night time. Also, feel free to pick any locks you find in the traders, they don't care about you stealing any of their stuff. So now you know how to buy and sell, you'll want to know who and where to do it. Each trader has a specialisation. Now if you want a fun drinking game, watch all of my videos and take a drink every time I say something like the following. The game doesn't explain this mechanic, so I had to go into the game files. So the following information is backed up by the game files, but of course there's always a chance I misinterpreted it. Misinterpreted it. Misinterpreted it. I cannot say that word. There is always a chance I misinterpreted it. So take it with a pinch of salt. Trader Joel specialises in tools and armour. What that means is he has a higher maximum amount of tools and armour than the average trader. Trader Joel can be found in Navisgain at these coordinates in the forest biome. One thing to note is that there are a total of 5 traders on the Navisgain map, one of each of the specialties. But on pre-gen or random maps you will find 10 traders, 2 of each specialty. Can't give you coordinates for randomly generated maps obviously, but you will almost always find a trader inside a city on a random gen map. Next we have Trader Bob. Trader Bob specialises in tools, like Joel, but also specialises in vehicle parts. This means he sells a higher amount of tools and he spawns vehicle parts and entire vehicles at a much higher rate than normal traders. It's very common to find him selling entire motorbikes or gyrocopters. Bob can be found at these coordinates in the desert biome on Navisgain. Third we have Trader Jen, she specialises in medicine. In this particular instance it means that Trader Jen sells more medicine, but also has a much higher probability of selling rare medicine like first aid kits than the other traders. Jen can be found right near the centre of the map outside the burned biome, in Navisgain. Everyone's favourite we have Trader Hugh, Hugh sells much higher quantities of ammo and guns. The absolute Chad lives in this log fortress here in the snow biome on Navisgain at these coordinates. 
and the person everybody loves to hate is Trader Wrecked. Yes, it's spelt like that. He specialises in seeds and canned food apparently, but in this example here he had none. I'm not surprised this guy's such a dick given he's trying to sell seeds in the middle of a nuclear wasteland here on the Navisgain map. Now on to a topic that was actually surprisingly hard to find valuable information on. Vending machines. Players can rent vending machines within the perimeter of a trader. Go up to one of these and interact with it. You'll see a small image that looks like a little vending machine. Here, you can rent it. It costs 2,500 dukes for 30 days. One important thing you should note is that if you rent a vending machine, near the top you'll see that it says it expires in then a day. It means that when the game date turns to that day, everything in the machine will be lost. So for example, if you rent the machine for 30 days on day 1, it will say expires day 31. And it means as soon as it becomes day 31. Not at the end of day 31, not in the middle of day 31. It ends one minute after 23.59 on day 30. Also, you can rent for longer than 30 days by repeatedly selecting rent. Each 2,500 payment of dukes you get gives you access to another 30 days before the money and the items in the machine are lost. So now you'll want to know how to make money with them. Well, it's kind of hard to really know because the code related to this mechanic in the game files is fairly well abstracted. But I did about an hour of testing with the machines to see how to make money with them. So the way you actually get money is that every day there appears to be some kind of roll for whether or not the NPC who runs the trader camp you're at will buy anything. In my testing it seemed that on average you would see Jen, who was the trader I was using for the test, would buy something every other day. What the trader buys seems to essentially be random. When I was testing I would rent the machine out for 90 in game days, then place one stack of each of the main ammunition types in the machine, and I would skip to day 90 to see if they had sold anything. On average, this test with standard pricing gave me 31,158 dukes. This was over 90 days which translates to 90 hours, so it's definitely not an amazing business strategy, but it does seem to prove that rented vending machines do in fact function, which with 7 days to die you can never take for granted. Hold on, just before I absolutely perforate your mind with too much information at once, I'm actually placing my call to action right here. A lot of info is about to be dumped and I don't want to overwhelm you, so go ahead and get hydrated, perform standard posture check procedures and consider subscribing if you're learning anything new or enjoying the video. Let's take a deep breath and get into the fucking nightmare that is the vending machine's mechanics. One mechanic available to the vending machine is you can adjust the price, but in my opinion just don't touch the fucking thing. You see, I performed this test again with a 20% discount and found a huge drop in profit, and the amount of ammo left after 90 days wasn't much higher or lower than in previous tests. Definitely never increase the price, at least if you're selling ammo like me. You see, I performed this test with a 20% raise in price, and you want to know what the average amount of dukes I got after 90 days was? Zero. That's right, with a 20% increase in price on the ammo, over three months, Jen didn't buy a single bloody bullet. Now I haven't tested this extensively, so you may want to take this whole section with a pinch of salt. I intend to get round to making a more in-depth and comprehensive guide on vending machines, but for now I'm just explaining the basic mechanics. But let's say it's been a few days, you come back to the vending machine and you see you've made no profit. First thing you should do is leave the interface and go back, because this whole mechanic is just that fucked. Fix your game, fun pimps. The Hawaiian did not need jiggle physics. So let's say you have made some profit. You can collect the money whenever you like by pressing the little coin. You can take all the items out of the inventory by pressing the icon next to the coin. Oh, and I, I can't believe I didn't mention this until now. You can add things to the vending machine by selecting it in your inventory and pressing add. You can select the whole stack by shift clicking the item. This will put the amount you're putting into the vending machine to the maximum and allow you to add things without having to fiddle with the arrows here. I'd recommend practicing the shift click then W pattern if you want to put lots of things in the vending machine quickly like this. Once inside you can raise the price, lower the price or take. Taking brings it back without charging you. The final important note about player rented vending machines is that one player can only have one vending machine on the entire map at a time. Another aspect of vending machines is the player owned vending machines. These cost about 3000 dukes and can sometimes be found in the secret stash of the trader. These work differently from rented ones, first of all, you keep it forever, but more importantly, NPCs will not buy from the player-owned vending machine. Only other players can buy from them. 
do not buy this in single player unless you want to use it as an advanced storage container with filtering. Also, you can place a player owned vending machine basically wherever you want. So now we know how to trade, where to trade and who to trade to, we should go over how to get the best prices. The first way to get better prices is the better barter perk. I won't do every rank, but with rank 5 you have access to the highest level secret stash. Click the annotation for more about how that works. And you get a 25% better deal at the traders. The next way is to use cigars. Cigars can be looted or crafted with one of the perk books. They give plus one strength and 10% better deals at the trader. These take up the mouth slot in the apparel inventory. Next, if you have the right Magnum Enforcer book, you'll get a 5% deal at the traders if you are holding a weapon that uses 44 ammo. So the Magnum or the Desert Vulture. The rest of the ways to improve deals are temporary consumables. We have Grandpa's Awesome Sauce, which gives a 20% bonus to bartering. We have Sugar Butt, which gives a 10% bonus, and we have Pumpkin Cheesecake, which gives a 5% bonus to buying from a trader. Note that for the Pumpkin Cheesecake, that bonus only applies when purchasing, not when selling. It would appear that all of these items and perks play nicely with each other, with none overriding the others. And we can see that the base selling price of the robotic turret ammo stack is 1800 dukes. But with all of these items at once, we can sell this for just over 3000 dukes, which is a very nice bonus and is approximately a 78% increase. Which, when you add up the bonuses of the items, is the same, so the items stack linearly, being calculated together at the end of the calculation as opposed to the percentages affecting each other in some kind of precedence which is good because a linear boost is much easier to work with. You won't need a calculator for this particular mechanic. So that should be everything you need to know about trading and vending machines in 7 days to die. As usual, if there are a lot of big questions in the comments, I'll make a follow up video. This one is already pretty long. Before you all click off the video, I just want to remind you that if you got any value out of today's video, consider subscribing for more content like this. Also, I've started a Twitter account for the channel. If that's something that interests you, the link is in the description. But with that, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.